glaciers in Himalayas are extinct. You see, these are this is extinct glaciers. Can I have a point of view? This is extinct glaciers, and uh, or they are on the verge of extinction. So this this is Khardunga glacier on uh, lifeline for a lake. So this has uh, receded about 28 point 20 point 8 kilometers since the last ice age, which is about 11,714 years. Now this is Siachen glacier again. When we were doing some pilot projects for exploration, then we again rethought about how glaciers are receding. So this was approximately this had receded about 78 kilometers. Now, lakes in Himalayas are shrinking. The Pangongsu Lake, the Somarani Lake, they are shrinking. Pro approximately one meter in 1000 years last. That is the uh, approximation data we got. Then we were delivering this uh, water projects for the Indian Army. And uh, we found this evidences because the entire shift was not only finding water but is uh, getting these oral samples to analyze it for uh, climate change. And so these this was the first evidence of this glacier which we found in Lake. So, these are the paleoclimatic signatures. These are also the first findings on, first authentic <coughs> finding on climate change. You know? These are sea cycles. These, these curves embedded in the granites of uh, the of Ladakh. So, you find these sea curves basically. The sea curves means less erosion, so you get this protuberance, you know. And when there is more erosion, you get this curve. So, these are very well carved structures of global warming, global cooling, global warming, global cooling. We found some tensile cycles, you know, in this. And uh, after every four cycles, we have a half cycle. In, if you consider, now I don't have the time, but I'm just uh, telling you briefly. These are taphonomical uh, uh, signatures, you know. Now, these are the resembles uh, alphabet C, so we call them uh, C cycles. And uh, now you see, this is not following a uh, linear curve, but this is following a curvy linear curve. Irrespective of what is happening in greenhouse gases or whatever is there, this is uniform thickness, which shows that climate has nothing to do with global warming or climate uh, climatic changes. So now, uh, then we did some calculations. This is the base area, uh, air, air we took from uh, the standard uh, ice age, and then. <coughs> Calculated it at every cycle, like we have 365 days. So every cycle is about 1338, and half cycle is about 669 years. So we are presenting half cycle. So we are not getting that much impact of global warming as we should get in the past. So these are few uh, other evidences. The lay, this is since we are now in this phase of global warming, so we are experiencing what we should expect is more floods, more rains, more cyclones. <coughs> These are inherent part property of global warming, and in by 2021 uh, uh, to 20, later part of 20, 21st century, we will be entering into global cooling age. Then entire things will be uh, changed, you know, irrespective of the fact how the greenhouse gases moves. So this is like our first so I will not come. So for geologists, uh, climate change is just a means of transporting all the sediments from Himalayas to the Bay of Bengal or anywhere you can see. Nothing more than that. So. So how that that is another respect. So climate change is a geological phenomena. There are no solutions to combat. So the simple solution is how to combat global warming is climate change is so just build sustainable habitats in geologically favorable locations. What do you mean by that? Away from shores, away from rivers. And you are happy with global warming. That's it. Nothing more. So enjoy global warming, that's the best part to be on this planet Earth. If you cannot enjoy it, what are you going to do? Just imagine living in Arctic and Antarctic, that is what global cooling is about. So this is called misconception, you know, which has been propagated, propagated about us. So this is based authentically on our research. Now, now geospatial application, what is it about, you know? So in past, you know, in this very simulation, the first application of geospatial planning, you see that the very old planned cities, Chandigarh, is not Rika Abuza's creation. That is a misconception. It was originally a Harappan site all maps, all designations, and then he just reinvented it or rediscovered it and just that is how the ticket was built. It was originally planning of the past. So now the impact of bombing on glaciers means uh, fresh water resources going down because no glaciers means no water. 
No water means what? Drinking water is not drinking water. Why is it drinking water? Drinking water is not drinking water. But what about these hydrogen? Now this is, this is not about, this is California, you know. This is California 2011, 2014. Just see what impact glaciers can make. What is it? What is it? If we have water coming from Yamuna, what do we have to do? River systems are so dangerous. Well, we have these water resources in our, but we want water from there, water from there, water from here. Why not clean this? Now, impact on power sector. Now, if there are no glaciers, you see, all your investments in hydropower projects goes for a six. Where are you going to get water to run these turbines? Massive investments, massive tunnels. मैं पहले कुछ गांव की प्रेजेंटेशन में हिमालयस ग्लेशियर्स एक्सटिंक्ट और ऑन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ एक्सटिंक्शन में कि रात के 20 30 इयर्स 20 20 30 इयर्स द सिनेरियो इस गोइंग टू बी टाइम डिफरेंट सो इन रेडी सेक्टर दिस इस सत्तू दिस इस सत्तू जो सो सो दिस वे आई फॉर्म दिस जो जो स्पेशल एप्लीकेशन when you don't have water, more silts, more floods, that is global warming and then this, this is what is going to happen to the dams. They become hydro bombs, you know, in future. We have to cater for that. The life of cement is about 70 years. Now the Bhagarangal dam, most oldest dam in the country, approximately uh, another 10 or 20 years more. Now talking about wind and solar, very good energy, renewable energy. We are talking about renewable energy in the past. In the last session, we were talking about fossil fuels and things, uh, uh, coal and uh, now wind and solar energy very good for India. When there is wind, you have less solar. When you have more solar, you have less winds. Because in summers we have very good hot summers here. We can use solar panels, and uh, in uh, rainy seasons we have a lot of winds coming. So we have a lot of wind energy. So hybrid of the two works out to be a very But the lacuna here is, what is the sustainability of the panels? It's about 15 years, 20 years. What do you do after that? These whole solar farms become the graveyard for the their panels and then who's going to recycle them and then it becomes like earlier we used to have this much big computers, now these laptops. Then who's going to do what with this, uh, you know? So this technology of solar panels has to evolve much faster then we should uh, incorporate it or maybe we can do it. So, this is it uh, regarding the solar, but India India and the Asian countries can become a hub for the solar type. Now, fossil fuel, we had these uh, two sessions. Now, fossil fuel is related to climate change, but that is another aspect. I don't know about this, but fossil fuels are limited resources. Uh, then, uh, uh, so investment in that has to be taken care of. Nuclear power plants, somebody government team, they wanted to just to invest in nuclear power plants, but one, it is not free energy. It is very costly energy and 1,000 megawatts cost about 110 billion dollars. And that is, it is it, and that after that also it is not safe energy. You see, nuclear power plants, we will be using the energy, but they, they become nuclear bombs for the future generations in, in a small disaster we have seen in Chernobyl and Fukushima. And one, Fukushima to reconstruct it cost 20 billion dollars in 20 years. That is the minimum figures they are talking about now. So that is nuclear power and they are investing now in geothermal power. So which is the phase, safest, phase, safest energy? Japan has also now almost shut down and then uh, reinvesting about uh, in a geothermal energy. So energy from Lava, this is Iceland. They have done tremendous job. So energy from Lava is the best energy. So we developed this concept of Abhinay Yodhgara, that is lava energy and the geocogic technology, that vertical tunneling, you know, basically very good, uh, that's not a geothermal energy, but big tunnels, vertical tunnels and then extract the energy from there. So it is like a geothermal energy is 24 to 7, renewable, safe. Now Fukushima, where the nuclear power plant was destroyed, all energy sources were destroyed, but geothermal plant was still running. So that is the power of geothermal. And uh, where we can find it now? These are, this is Krafla, the Iceland. This is a pilot project done in 2010 for to develop into magma, 2.8 kilometers, 2.1 kilometers depth, about 
500 degrees of supercritical fluid streams and another 5 kilometers depth, now they are just about to complete in uh, Iceland, into magma drilling and that is, so in Himalayas but, oh yeah, so this is the two minutes. So this is now uh, the geothermal energy resource, very well established by us, by our ancestors in past, in money current year for serving three, four, since last 500 years. And uh, potential is about 10,000 megawatt electric. And this is the geothermal map which we prepared now. Almost everywhere, every part of India has this. Not in terms of production, but in terms of exchange. You can save air conditioning systems by up to 40%. Any building can be saved using if geothermal systems are in the world. Now this is a pilot project again, 100 meters depth, 130 degrees temperatures in Jumathan, the dark. And uh, the total potential is about, uh, now this is history, uh, very well established in different countries, America, Philippines, Indonesia, Iceland, now aluminium products, uh, the cheapest aluminium you find is in Iceland, because free energy, almost free energy. Kenya has shown that uh, billions of dollars can be saved on fossil fuels, it's the cheapest form, more cheaper than hydropower project. Hydropower is more sustainable than that. So these are the different applications. The hot water which you get after the after generating can be used for various applications in dairy, fisheries, agriculture. And now this is if you're using this for air conditioning, you can save about trillion dollars, you know. Two, two trillion uh, liters of water can be saved, you know. That is the amount, you know, all the heating towers they go. And this is a futuristic scenario. You're talking about smart cities now. So all these establishments which are coming up, they need geothermal systems to be incorporated in that so that energy system. So every tunnel which is coming up can be used as geothermal source for exchanging, you know. This is the futuristic planning which has to be incorporated in smart cities to save energy. So that's it. So this is just a comparison. So I thank you. Thank you for coming. And I give you the next. So if you have any questions, we can discuss now or maybe later. Uh, maybe panel discussion we can have with you. all the questions. <coughs> so next speaker we have uh, is uh, Mr. Sharesh Shankar. is manager APAC Sales Engineering Digital Group. Welcome, sir. Sharish has been active in the field of remote sensing and GIS for the last 18 years, has master's degree in environmental science, and has served various roles in industry managing pre-sales, business development, and project implementation with prominent companies in the industry. Over the years, he has gained a wide experience in various industry domains. Over to you, Sharish. <laughs> Sir's talk, 